Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take a midweek break, and talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of open source and Linux. I'm Vin Stone. That is Joe Bryant. Mm -hmm. And all the way over there on the right, one Pedro Medeus. Hello. Well, I don't do the TH, man. I say Pedro, Pedro <laughs> Medeus. Well, correctly, it would be uh, Mateus. But yeah, Mateus, your pronunciation's Mateus. not correct. I'm like, but you know what I meant, man. You know what I meant. Yes. Oh, beautiful people! It is another fantastic, fantastic Wednesday. Um, what's everyone been up to, Jill? You, you, you were cheating on us. Oh no, never. <laughs> you totally had... did. We have video evidence. Yes. <laughs> So I had a great time being a guest on Big Daddy Linux last Saturday. Thank you to Rocco and the community for being so welcoming. And it was wonderful to have the opportunity to spread the love of LGC. And looking forward to doing it again soon. It looks like I'm going to be doing it every month. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know what show you've been watching. Pedro, you never play. You actually put stuff in there. What, what, what's wrong? What have you done with the real Pedro? I've been doing that for the past three weeks. <laughs> Well, two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. No, you. If you saw that uh, foul mouth at Saturday show, what we do? Uh, I had a bit of an issue with my uh, Dual Shock Four, and that I thought it's still plugged in. <laughs> oh, and that I thought it's um, it, it had been Solus that had screwed up the uh, compatibility again. But no, as it turns out, it was. Uh, an issue with a patch that was introduced in kernel 5015. And yeah, a lot of people were running into similar issues with Bluetooth mice and keyboards. And yeah, there's been mm. a bit of a discussion going on in the uh, Solus dev tracker. And finally, there has been a patch introduced to the kernel. It hasn't been approved yet, but hopefully we can, you know, get that in quickly because it's, uh, yeah, it actually fixes the issue because stuff like the DualShock 4 and uh, mice, keyboards, I could see the need for the encryption, but at least for like game controllers mm. and mice, you don't really need encryption over Bluetooth. So just, you know, let those devices connect. No, Pedro, you shouldn't worry about it. You should only use wired controllers so you don't get the hand cancer. <laughs> yeah because they're not electrical or anything <laughs> oh, that's kind of brilliant man uh, i've been playing with a lot of stuff uh mostly yesterday if you follow me on social media my budget 10 gig nix repurposed ancient mm -hmm. enterprise melanox like connect 2 they came in uh smoke testing that because i want to move everything over to g on a budget here that uh worked out worked out of the box no problem on um 1804 ubuntu and fedora just plug in curl picks it up uh it's gonna be interesting we're using that to do a little bit of spaghetti nightmare because like right now jill and pedro are on boxes that don't have sound cards in them they're coming over ethernet <laughs> Is 100% digital. I'm trying to, like, get rid of any of that conversion. And basically, so anyone at home that wants to play the home game will be able to replicate everything that we do here with software. Yes. So then you, too, can go out and make shows of questionable quality like we do. <laughs> well, uh, no one will question you on your uh, technical quality. Yeah, just yeah, the content. This is true. I mean, <laughs> not, not to say these people don't have fair points, but something that really was never, maybe the installer was of questionable quality. Is in Targos. <laughs> we we got to say goodbye. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah. This is just really, really, really sad. I was, uh, and Targos was the distro I would recommend new users to learn Arch because it had an easy to use. GUI installer and a nice package manager that you could use to both to access both the Arch repositories as well as the AUR. And yeah, so it's I, I guess the developer said they're um, just not don't have the time anymore to work on it, which is really really sad when that happens. I'm so depressed about it that. Tends to happen, yeah. With teeny tiny mm -hmm. teams, it tends to happen. There's also the yeah. fact, and uh, mm -hmm. they don't specifically mention this in the article. 
But there's also the fact that uh, Manjaro came in and ate all their cake. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, you want an easy to use arch base distro? It's like, oh, look here, Manjaro. Okay, this is what I got to ask about. <laughs> I mean, I never get to play around. I've not played around with just regular arch I've played with. But you know, by the time these fancy like things with installers, I was like, what be those? Uh, what What's the deal when you say they they're cake men? It's because they had a very similar concept from the get-go. It's like making Arch easier for uh, newer users. And uh, Energos introduced the like the graphical installer and everything else. And then Manjaro said, oh, we can do that too. And they did that. And they basically went the extra mile to automate a, car a couple of other things with the installation process. And mm. basically said, look, we're now the de facto user-friendly Arch-based distro. So, so this was like just superseded. This was still like user friendly yeah. light. Yeah, this was user friendly, yeah. but still very much based on Arch as uh, the Arch experience that created so many of those people. Uh <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, one of and the things, I mean, nowadays sad. you can install Arch on Windows though, right? You can. Yes, you, <laughs> you can. You actually can. You can go to the Windows Store. I'm not joking. <laughs> you click the Arch button and you can install it. Mm. One of the things and, I'm uh, thinking about, man, is definitely good on the team, though, because they start out and they mm -hmm. state in the blog post, they're like, yo, th this is a summertime project that got out of hand. And <laughs> my brothers and yes. sisters, I read that and I was like, I know those feels. Um, mm -hmm. so, but good on them for like hey we're going to transition this out to basically we're just going to have arch we're just not going to drop complete support we're going to get rid of the stuff that we've added that's going to get phased out because we've seen distributions countless and especially ones with a larger you know say top 20 uh mm -hmm. user base that just poof mm -hmm. like peace out go find some milks not a problem so and good on it's, you, yeah, no, it's very good on the team to actually, it's like, okay, it's so a final bit of work. We're going to move everyone over to Arch. So you can just keep running it as though you had been running Arch all this time. And that way people can keep using whatever system they already had going without feeling that they have to reinstall because, you know, it's no longer supported. Yeah. <laughs> Still sad to see him go. It really, yeah. really is. But it's new. Yeah. We, new mm -hmm. stuff, something that's not going to go around for a long time, uh, will die anytime soon. It's clear Linux. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <by> <laughs> it's, it's the new hotness right now. So, yes, Intel updates its clear Linux OS with lots of improvements. And uh, the new clear Linux distro contains a deep learning stack and a new data analytics reference stack. That quote was developed to help enterprises analyze, classify, recognize, and process large part large amounts of data built on Intel Xeon scalable platforms using Apache Hadoop and Apache Spark. And I've actually been really impressed, <laughs> really impressed by Clear Linux. Um, it's 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 now one of my favorite new distros. It runs really fast, even on an old 2013 Lenovo ThinkPad, ThinkPad Edge um, laptop with a quad-core AMD APU. And I actually wanted to test it on AMD hardware because obviously the um, hardware optimizations um, we would think would be for nope. Intel products. Nope. But it'll, it'll explode. It'll run screeching. It'll kick down the door and <laughs> out screeching into the The kernel will Don't see your it. processor yeah. and go, nope, not having any of that. <laughs> yes. I actually was reading articles about that, how people were like, well, it's probably not going to support AMD. And I'm well, sure it will. So I wanted to give it a spin. And it worked great. And the new GUI installer, um, desktop edition, is organized nicely and easy to use and very fast. And the Firefox web browser just runs so fa so much faster and zippier than even on modern hardware. I was really, really impressed with their optimizations with Firefox. And yeah, my, yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, uh, that's okay. Go ahead, Pedro. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it's just that apparently, because I've been using uh, Clear Linux on one of the laptops for several months now, mm -hmm. And one of the things I read is like, oh, people were scared of the old end curses installer that you had to mm -hmm. use, basically. 
uh, mm-hmm. because they didn't have a GUI installer. So the new GUI installer is making people go, oh, okay, I can try it now. I can click next real well. So are, are you being serious? Yeah. People have problems with in curses, but if I had an in curses installer back, oh yeah, I was like oh, <laughs> fancy. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. People were just like, oh, it's a, it's an end curses. I don't, I don't want to use it. I want a GUI installer. I want mouse support. Okay. <laughs> but then again, I'm old. Get off my lawn, and I, I'm still like weirded out and a little bit mesmerized mm-hmm. the fact that I have a mouse cursor in BIOS or UFI. I, oh yeah, yeah. This, I, that this always is not right. Freaks it, me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a UEFI that connects directly to the internet to download updates. Uh, huh. Yes. <laughs> hey man, you have an MSI Tomahawk. I think it's too. It's got a browser built into it. It's awesome. Yeah. It reminds me of installing Solaris back in the day because <laughs> thank you, son. You knew it took forever to get that installed. You gave me something <laughs> to do. It made me happy. Uh, yes. <laughs> Clear Linux is, I mean, nothing, I've never heard anything negative about it other than like a tremendous and it's bad for reasons, but uh, it, it's going to be interesting just to see how the adoption goes with that. Because, I mean, there's always like that little niche distro that a lot of people use. And I, I think this is, Clear Linux is big enough not to be niche anymore, isn't it? And it's, uh, as it, as Jill mentioned, it performs very well, comparatively speaking, at a software level. Uh, when you know when you're comparing it to other Linux distros, and it's because of all the optimizations that Intel did, and it's yeah, when you throw mm-hmm. Clear Linux on one laptop that you know exactly how it performs with other distros, and all of a sudden, wait a second, everything is faster. What the hell? Yes, <laughs> that yeah, definitely <laughs> seems to be like. <laughs> That, yeah. that that's like the slogan. Somebody I was like, I don't know what compiler optimizations they've done, but they've done them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, they done you them know, and they done them good. <laughs> really well. I mean, Steam runs beautifully. I was averaging 60 frames per second on this old machine with distance and the Talos principle, which, you know, it isn't aren't the latest games, but still at 60 frames per second, I never got that on that old laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is impressive. Hey, speaking of speed yeah. or the lack oh, of. Yes. So, uh, with yet another four um, vulnerabilities introduced with the zombie load thing, um, Intel processors have once again uh, been subjected to mitigations because they, you can't actually fix them. The, Can I these just are make problems. an editor's note? Okay. Real, real, real quick, ne- next to the note, like if I'm following instructions, if, if there's some weeb stuff on the page, I instantly am like, I don't trust anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2019, Ven. That's perfectly acceptable. Again, get off my lawn, man. <laughs> yes. I, I'm just giving it a hard time. I mean, trust me, yeah. there are valid criticisms about that site. And <laughs> Yeah, there are. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, with this one, it there is a point to it and it's how uh they call it how to make uh, linux run blazing fast again uh on intel cpus and this is not valid just for intel cpus this is valid for every single distro out there that likes to enable all of these mitigations for uh, specter and meltdown and zombie load and everything else that's come out for intel specific uh hardware um uh, all of those issues um uh, if you have, say, an AMD CPU and you don't, since you know for a fact and AMD themselves have confirmed that the Ryzen uh, CPUs are only vulnerable to, I think it's Spectre Variant 2, if I'm not mistaken. And everything else, there there's a near zero chance that they will be affected. So all you need to do is add that bit in bold text that they have on the website, the no IBRS, no IBBP, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. just add all of those. Or if your distro is already running on kernel 5.113 or higher, you can just add the mitigations off to the kernel line. Uh, although if you are running Solus and you're not using Grub, it's not the same place. There'll be There's a thing in the show notes that you can go look at to figure out exactly where you need to drop that line. And then just run the uh, CLR boot manager update to update the UEFI entry. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's easy to do. And um, I actually li- liked how the article states you are probably an adult. You can and should wisely decide just how much risk you are willing to take. Do or don't try this at home. 
you don't not want to try this at work. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't. Yeah, do yeah this you at don't. Work. <laughs> and, and and yet, so to me, the benefits in performance by disabling the met- meltdown specter Linux kernel fixes far outweighs my worry of it actually being a problem. At least, you know, personally at home and my workspace, I wouldn't do that. But at home, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, for your home computer, on about, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything to really worry about. Until there is, there's always that part mm-hmm. of the equation. Until there is. So th- that's a conversation you have to have with yourself of like, oh, maybe somebody, which probably will eventually find like a real, genuine way to access this. And that could be bad. Maybe you want to have it in place. But if you don't, you know, if I had an Intel CPU, the the only Intel anything I have in this house is that tablet. But if I was using that like laptops or something like that, I would probably disable all this junk. But then again, this is hundred percent coming from a person that believes reckless self endangerment is a lifestyle choice. Um, so don't listen to anything I say. Use with your own caution. Chromebooks. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Chromebooks, Chrome OS, mm-hmm. Chrome Tablet News, all of this is from about Chromebooks.com. All of this is going to be in our show notes if you're listening or watching after the fact. A uh, couple of thoughts on not making this up. Flapjack, the two Chrome <laughs> OS tablets, <laughs> coming yes. with eight mm, and delicious. 10.1 inch displays. This is just walking down what's inside of them. Uh, Speed wise, you know, dimensions. What, what, what can we expect from it? And I'm. Unfortunately, I guess, maybe not unfortunately, but I just come to the realization that we're not real. No one's making high-end tablets anymore that are going to be running Android. So my next Android tablet will more than likely be running Chrome OS. But these, uh, Pedro, don't look like they're terribly performant. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the like the performance numbers and then you go look at like the Pixel C numbers that came out a while back... They're very similar. Uh, so these are probably going to be like the mid to low end range of the Chrome OS tablets that are going to start coming out. And, you know, considering how well the uh, Acer Chromebook over here uh, has been faring when it comes to working in tablet mode, because, yeah, touch screen, you can flip it over, do the thing. Just, Yeah. <laughs> It's a tablet now. That would have been a lot more entertaining <laughs> if you had the wrong one. Um. <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, no, that uh, Chromebook, were, it's been working really well. I just want Google to enable uh, hardware acceleration for the um, the Linux apps. But mm. as a tablet for just your typical media consumption, internet browsing, everything else... It is more than acceptable, and it only has a weak, uh, weak little two-core Celeron uh, N3050, I think. Mm. So, yeah, it's nothing spectacular, but it works really well. So probably the performance numbers aren't going to be too much of an indication since Chrome OS runs really, really well for everything that it can do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once there's... <laughs> And most of them seem to be x86, though, like... Um, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> which, I'm like, oh, battery life. Sorry, that's just reality. I was interested in, like, the Google Chromebook until they dropped that price. I was like, whoa, uh-uh. Yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and even their top-tier Pixel, whatever they wanted to call it, that thing was chuggy. Then I saw mm-hmm. some of the reviewers with, like, the $600 one. And I was like, I could probably mm-hmm. con myself into buying that. That it, it was, I could not believe Google released this product at I mean, yeah. it, nowadays. Even like Android apps running on top of Chrome OS on these weak little Celeron x86 uh, mm-hmm. Chromebooks, they work really well. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm happy about it. Um, because you know, delete exploit of laptops that's not a part of my life I want back ever. <laughs> nope, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so actually, you know, uh, I, I've i always, uh, actually, kind of a long story, but years ago, I predicted that that uh, Google was going to be moving away from Android to Chrome OS. I just kind of saw the signs. So, but I'm, I'm, you know, the more Chrome tablets, Chrome OS tablets out there, the, the better. So it gets, it improves the user experience. And I think it's a really good thing. 
I think we're definitely going to have Chrome OS for that right up until they get done with Fuchsia. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is true. Maybe that, that is yeah. going to be an interesting launch. <laughs> it, yes. Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, if they already have the, and, uh, the Android compatibility layer for that working out of the box, it's going to be like, yeah, it's a smooth launch as well as you could expect. But if they don't, yeah, that's not going to fly. <laughs> I mean, you do have to look at the very real, um, like my daily driver, my tablet that I carry around with a little keyboard in it when I'm out and about is, what is it, like seven-year-old, six-year-old mm -hmm. Nexus 10. And you know what? It does everything I need it to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we're not, I'm not a patient person. I'm not talking about like it barely gets by. I'm like, no, I mean, it plays the YouTubes, the Netflixes, surfs the web, and I can do show notes on it. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at this point, I just want to buy something new to buy something new. So that's kind of the hard sell. Yeah, I found myself uh, actually thinking about that. So, yeah, I've had that Shield tablet, yeah. the Explodey one, supposedly, Blam. since 2014. <laughs> it's been yeah. five years, and just there haven't really been any better Android tablets in that particular form factor. The, the market yes. kind of fell out. And yeah. then recently yeah. you did the thing that I think uh, most people do at some point. You put lineage on, you're like, whoa, okay, now it's new again. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still using my WebOS touchpad, you mm. know, for that reason. Lineage still runs beautifully on it and has the best speakers yeah. of any of the new laptops. It's great. And an old Kindle Fire just runs fine. <laughs> right. Uh, best Korea. Well, depending well on the, yeah. second best Korea, depending on who you ask. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> oh, yes. This yes. one uh, is, uh, yeah. So everyone was talking about this earlier in the week because South Korea is, well, the article title is a little bit misleading, but they're considering moving over to Linux and they're going to put it to the test and see how everything uh works mostly because windows 7 is the support is going to end in 2020 and they don't want to move to windows 10 like any sane person ever uh would uh assume so they decided you know what linux is a thing we hear our uh neighbors up north are uh, are actually using linux as well you know for different reasons but they're also using linux uh but so Let's give it a shot, and they're going to test everything, mostly because as someone who works for a government entity, I know for a mm -hmm. fact how old <laughs> and deprecated technologies that many of the systems are built on. Okay, um, like, nod your head if you XP still somewhere. All right. Just, <laughs> yes. Just, just one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we can't touch that. We're not allowed to touch that. Uh, but yeah, I too tried. It's like, okay, if we, I know that uh, my boss would never agree to it because reasons, uh, but I decided to pick up one of the laptops, install Linux and make everything work. I basically ran into the exact same issue that NHS Buntu, when that was still a thing, uh, that they ran into, which was Java with the smart card reader and everything else for the interactions with the browser. I ran into that, but it's no longer a thing. So it's like, ooh, maybe now's the thing. Oh, no, wait, now Skype is our FOIP solution, so we need Skype for business to work. Hi, Pigeon. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, if even the slightest thing isn't working and it doesn't look like it did... Someone is going to complain and is therefore not acceptable because, you know, doing IT in a government job is to your job is basically to raise the minimum amount of waves to mm -hmm. keep things quiet and people not complaining. So doing this at the actual government level in a country like South Korea, this is going to be significant if they pull yeah. it off. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, since Microsoft's free technical support for Windows 7 expires in January 2020, they're concerned, of course, with the cost of continuing to maintain Windows. And they said that this transition to Linux is expected to cost the government $655 million. But that also includes, of course, the purchase of new PCs. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that Linux costs anything. It's that to transition to it and the training and the cost of the computers and whatnot. 
<laughs> training. That's the big one. Yeah, training. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, every time I see this, the me and me is like, yeah, this is how you start uh, negotiations with Microsoft to get a better deal on your um, next That's enterprise. That's what role. Munich did. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Wait for bated breath. Something that made me almost like I didn't squee, but I vibrated with delight. Really <laughs> yes. This week. We, we've talked about like this was on the horizon, but it's actually yes. something you can get your it's, hands on. Yeah. And as we talked about, as Vince said on LWW, um, at, at the very uh, very first day of May, XFCE 4.1 for pre version one is on schedule and just and has just been released and several features and updates that we we have been talking about since february are included and one is the color d front end has been included in xfce4 settings as promised which enables color management and profiles on a per screen basis and that is just wonderful. <laughs> and this this will help us all. Also, those of us who have have uh, um, AMD GPUs, this, this is very helpful. <laughs> this, yeah, the, the color thing genuinely has me excited because uh, right now I have a <laughs> very, very color accurate monitor and one that's kind of color accurate monitor. You should track that it's got too much red in it. Um, <laughs> So with the, you know, NVIDIA settings with the proprietary system, you can set that, go in there, and you can select the, you know, just red channel and back that down. And it saves it, and occasionally RNG, when it feels like it, it will apply it to your desktop on the next boot. And, you know, sometimes you'll open mm -hmm. NVIDIA settings, and it'll just default back to being a little red. And, yeah, I'd like to be able to set that one other way. Uh, the support for high DPI, mm -hmm. very yes. welcome. We were talking about that in the pre-show. Because, you know, I have a 28-inch UHD monitor and a 42, 43-inch HD monitor. So, yeah, individual uh, DPI scaling would be very, very welcome. Um, there's probably going to be bugs to play with and work out. They do say there is a staging PPA for the Zambuntus, if that's how you want to roll with yep. it. Uh, I... Mm -hmm went to dig up my script i got to convert my script over from uh Ubuntu to fedora my mm -hmm. automagic build script but uh hopefully there might even be like a copper repo for that in short order looking forward to it looking and uh acceleration for xf wm man that yes <laughs> hey hey it's only been it uh, took a minute how long has that <laughs> been long around <laughs> yeah I remember using XFCE3, you know, and then two before that in beta. But having compositing built in, that's a good thing. And you're like, well, it's a good thing. You know what? But it's stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the stable it desktop. Now, yes. I've said this before because it's like, but it looks bad. You, you could probably make it pretty. I'm, you yeah, can. You can. I, I, I don't <laughs> understand. And I'm not judging. I just genuinely, out of confusion, don't understand somebody. It's like, what do you do? Just like open your desktop. Don't touch anything and look at it because I'm I'm in a program. I'm in a game. I'm doing something. I'm not looking at my <laughs> yes. desktop, but I don't know. I don't understand it, but I don't judge it. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad people take joy and pride in doing all that fun stuff. What do we got up next? Mm -hmm. Up next, we have OBS. And uh -oh. uh, yeah. did you have a crack yes. at it? Because yesterday's stream was still run on 23.1, so meh. 23.2, yeah. release candidate one, features and improvements. <laughs> uh, a couple of things on Linux. They have fixed an issue where it would not be able to capture from some monitors, to which I'll go, well, it'd be nice if we could capture from separate X screens, because then I, you think I got too many monitors now. Oh, you just wait, son. Um, they also fixed an issue with VAPI, the VAPI encoder for AMD. And I think it also will work on Intel, uh, where CBR would not always output a constant bit rate. That's kind of important. A couple of things I'm yeah. personally, a uh, gang of bug fixes. One of the things I'm waiting on, definitely waiting on, is to mm -hmm. get integrated with the NV Encode hotness, the new stuff from NVIDIA that's been out since our last release on the Windows side. Again, with the separate X screens. And uh, one other thing mm -hmm. is they keep threatening to play with it and look at it is an integrated Linux browser because we use the uh, Linux browser plugin 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, and it freezes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. It, yes. We use that for chat. <laughs> Yeah, and that you know, it's better than nothing. It's chromium, but yeah. uh, I, I would like that actually integrated properly with yes. OPS. That's a, that's a wish bucket. Pedro, you got some other things, right? Yeah, uh, mm. one of the uh, fixes or the changes that they made is uh, they made the mouse wheel scroll uh, scroll the uh, list of mixer items instead of scrolling the individual mixer values. Yeah. <laughs> And I was thinking, it's like, yeah, that stream I did yesterday on more than one occasion. It's like when the NPCs were talking, I mm-hmm. got quiet and I went to OBS and I increased the uh, game volume sound and then brought it back down. How? By moving over the mouse and then scrolling to bring it down and bring it up. I like that. Don't change yes. that. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> that's like functionality that's been there since the start. Don't just change that oh i i'm kind of yeah. torn maybe i i mean i kind of wanted to change it because it causes you pain but um i can see where you're coming from yeah it's mm-hmm. if it hadn't been there from the start okay but it it has been the way that that's worked since day one and i i i like it i got i got used to it My, the producer the in me the producer in me the tech uh, <laughs> technical dude is like why don't you get your level straight in the first place scrub because I was changing them in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Quit playing with things in the middle of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> so that people could hey, hear the it. dialogue because the dialogue was genuinely funny. That was like the thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And then so they, you know, shouldn't make it so easy because audio is is more important in many ways than the video. So <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. give people a toggle. Just you yeah. know it's like, okay, the scroll wheel actually changes the values instead of scrolling the whole list. I'd be happy with mm-hmm. that. Well the Yeah. <laughs> Have you looked into the hotkeys? <laughs> Let me tell you yes. about hotkeys yeah. and the signable ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I, I'm just saving yes. you the time from telling the developers and the developers like, Have you looked into hotkeys? Mm-hmm. We're adjusting volume <laughs> where you could just yeah and this keyboard has a bunch of media hotkeys that i can yeah. access through the uh, little yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> all right uh wallpapers multi-mon okay this, this is clearly a jill story uh, yeah this uh, yeah well this is super paper super paper is an advanced multi-monitor wallpaper tool for linux and i tested super paper on gnome and xfce and it works it works quite well it isn't the prettiest of applications but definitely gets the job done there and there are very few multi-monitor wallpaper apps for linux in this space And I love the fact that you can save your favorite wallpaper monitor settings to configuration profiles. And this is actually a really nice alternative to the GNOME tweak tool for spanning an image across multiple monitors. And there is another option, Hydra Paper, but it only works on GNOME 3, Mate, and the Budgie desktop managers and doesn't have all the advanced settings that Super Paper does, which uh, Pedro is going to tell you about. Well, it's not so much on the um, <laughs> the advanced features, but there is one that they yeah. do that is yeah. very nice, which is the ability to calculate the pixels per inch based on the information of your monitor, which being able to do that conversion it, for, you know, different uh, size and different resolution monitors, like in my case, I have a 24-inch uh, 34, mm-hmm. 3840 by 2160 monitor, and right next to it are two 23-inch uh, 1920 by 1080 p monitors. So it there's a significant mm-hmm. pixel per inch difference there. And if I wanted to have a wallpaper to stretch between all of them, it would it just wouldn't look right. Now, honestly, I just like to have different wallpapers for different screens so that my eyes, whenever I change to another screen, I can immediately identify which one it is Tell. just based on yeah. the color code of the uh, the screen itself and it's uh one of the things that the mate desktop doesn't do properly it doesn't let you uh set per screen wallpapers and so correct, it needs yeah. something out of the box to mm-hmm. do that so yeah super paper would be a very nice implementation <laughs> out of the box wimpy yeah. just saying <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, I squirrel a lot, so having different colored wallpapers actually helps me identify what I should be doing, okay? <laughs> You're not doing it very hard if you have wallpaper visible. <laughs> There's always like a quarter of it visible. <laughs> I, 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 you know, this is fantastic. This is 100. Yes. Like, I, this is it's great. I would never know things like this exist, nor would you ever hear from me. I'm like, there's a wallpaper up. Like, what? Yes. Um, there's multiple. <laughs> yeah. This is great. This is a beautiful thing about Linux, man. I mean, it's choice. I mean, you. I am extremely basic with right click, solid color, black. Ah, I can see now. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I found dark, that solid colors. colors. Listen, man, I found that solid <laughs> colors they scale very well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they don't really care about your pixels per inch. No, no, well, life hack. Oh man, beautiful You've people. Got, uh, I got that zeroed out, then. Hey, Amen. I'm just saying, um, ahead of the Literally. game the whole time. <laughs> It's not stupid. It's advanced. Um, or, you know, really backwards, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> little column A, little column B, gentlemen. Uh, check this out. Hey, if you like what we do and you want to support us, we don't do ads. Uh, we rely on you. There's a couple yeah. ways to do that. We got a merch store. Check that out. If you want to confuse people with things like Hell Elk stickers and chairs and shirts, <laughs> they are there for your viewing enjoyment. We get a little cut of that. Uh, we got a wish zone, which is filled with data noodles because I'm up to no good. <laughs> and we're going to have a pretty interesting how-to coming with that, mostly relating to audio. A um, bunch of boring stuff on there. Uh, but 122 beautiful party patrons bringing this to you every single week. They, they get a little cut. They get an extra show every week. We do a pre-pre super shows and they can join in live every Saturday, but that goes out. You get a custom RSS feed. You can put that. There's even video of it. That's where we talk about everything else going on behind the scenes here at LGC on all the shows and all that. And you get early access to our uncut live streams. If you like that nonsense, it's also available. Plus mm -hmm. one of the cool things about it is we have IRC. IRC is open to everybody. Come in during the live shows mm -hmm. and all that, but the other six days a week we we got the campagan club in our little <laughs> discord and you're like I, i've actually had this conversation like i'm not installing a thing discord and i'm like use i use the web page to open it in a tab that's where my discord lives it's <laughs> like slack with the option to tell people what video games you're playing okay and yep. <laughs> but that gives you access to our live audio streams anything like that and come hang out with us there's about 100 people chilling out in there really cool community it's pretty interesting I, we, we got a lot of lurkers i lurk a lot of the times and uh, <laughs> like oh what's everyone up to but always fun conversations going on in there but thank yes. you to everyone um making this possible we got a new person uh, uh a returning patron i believe Jill? yes yeah yeah vertinog yeah he's been around for a while but i guess uh he was he he came back or he had been donating on the PayPal. Oh, I, oh, I can't remember. He's oh, been around for yeah. years. Oh, all we know is we get a notification. So I've had yeah. yeah. some you for yeah. I'm just like, I don't know. I just got an email, man. And I want to give everybody a shout out. And yeah, uh, make sure you. their names are in the credits. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Uh thanks everybody. For making that possible. Uh, okay. Let's get into a mm -hmm. slice, slice of pie. Slice of pie. pie. It's the <laughs> Build a Raspberry Pi is... GoBot budget trans. Why would I want to build budget mm -hmm. transformers with children? Oh, <laughs> oh, this is really great to teach your kids Linux and coding. And it's a really fun way to do it. And it only requires $60 in parts and an easy to learn 10 line Python program. You can build a Raspberry Pi GoBot with your kids or your nephews or nieces. And what I think is really cool is, is you can use. Um, the chassis can be built with found parts and found items, including Legos, like they, they used in this example. But you could also use cardboard or plastic or maybe even a waffle. <laughs> I don't know. As long as, long as it isn't about six inches square. <laughs> a waffle. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen one of these two-wheeled robots built on a waffle. Yeah. I'll have to probably Google for it, but I think I've seen that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't uh it requires easy to get get two parts. And um oh gosh, uh, just a USB mobile phone battery pack and six AA mm -hmm. batteries. 
And uh, you first in the article, they, they show you how to set up the GPIO pins with your devices and then um, how to place it on on uh, whatever found part you found to to uh, create the robot and the rubber reels that you bought. <laughs> It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> pretty nice. Listen, you you can make something. I mean, for the kids or like for education. Education. This the Raspberry Pi mm. has just been brilliant. Yes, lovely, awesome. Um, to get kids in. I mean, it's the modern Heath kit. Yeah, just be real about exactly. it. Exactly. And this this I'm like yo, you you can make mm -hmm. it a little bun. Then when the kids go home, you can make something absolutely treacherous with the leftover parts. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. my mind is awash. With it. it's like, Ooh. I'm surrounded by all of these crafting materials and the leftover <laughs> raspberry pie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. oh. Hey, man. <laughs> I was really close to like building another Doomba. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. I saw you yeah. posted the uh, Michael Reeves video on uh, Discord. It's like, yes. That that is what you should do with it. <laughs> with the <laughs> robot. <laughs> I, I, I saw the video where you made it and it's like, I oh, just scream profanity. It's like, yeah, mine was cooler. Mine had a steak knife taped to the top and it screamed exterminate while it was back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you because can build a board robot. <laughs> um Okay, it looks like we got to do this list because uh, this is basically the same list every year, isn't it? Yeah, yes. it's, uh, every now and then there's a bit of a variance, mm -hmm. but uh, this is another one of those lists. It's like, okay, so you're looking for something that's got the same, like, uh, preferably the, the same form factor, so it works with yeah. all of your own. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Same form factor as a Raspberry Pi, perhaps the same GPIO layout and everything else, but you want something more powerful. Something that can do perhaps um, proper uh, 10 gigabit or even gigabit e Ethernet and proper USB 3.0 on separate buses so they actually get full speed. Well, uh, there's still mm -hmm. only one possibility for that, because while, yes, the Asus Tinker board is the most expensive one of them all, it <laughs> doesn't do USB 3. Uh, if you want USB 3, you actually have to go with the Rock Pi, which yeah. will still set you back about 80 bucks. But yeah, besides those two, you also have the Pine 64, Rock 64, which is very similar to the Rock Pi, and it is basically running the same architecture as the um, Pine Books. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. it's made by <laughs> Pine 64. And you have uh, the Libre, Libre Computer AML S905X CC. It just rolls out of the tongue. Or as they call it, the pota Le Potato. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Potato. Well, yeah, yeah I, and I actually... Oh, droid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Pedro. Yes. So that's my <laughs> my favorite one that I, I've used the potato as well. Um, but the hard kernel Odroid C2 is one of my favorites on the list and is only a few dollars more than a Raspberry Pi 3 and is priced at $40. And the, yep. the processor, which is cool, is, is based on the same Cortex-A53 cores as the Pi, but clocked at 2 gigahertz instead of 1.2 gigahertz and, and essentially makes it run 67% faster. And it does run a lot faster. And it's got 2 gig of RAM instead of 1 gig of RAM. And it, and it outputs HDMI 2.0 with 4K video and H.265 and 4K hardware video decoding. And it has gigabit yeah. Ethernet. I just love this this card because it's basically, you know, a more powerful version of a Pi, but doesn't doesn't cost as much. And software and, compatible. And software <laughs> compatible. Exactly, Pedro. Software compatible. And um, it has it's been around for many, many years. So it mm -hmm. has all that support built in, which is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> this is all extreme. Did the uh, yeah. Jetson Nano not make an appearance? On the uh, you see, mm. if you look at the price of the Asus Thinker board and you're mm. already thinking, yeah. yeah, that's a little too expensive. And then you throw the Jetson Nano, that's about three times the price. No. Yeah. Listen, man, <laughs> sometimes I just want to make it rain. <laughs> yeah, the Jetson Nano is great. And I'm sure, you know, NVIDIA part and whatnot is going to perform very, very well. But it, yeah, no, it's not cheap. Did you see that thing I posted in <laughs> Discord earlier? The um, Xeon Brick? 
Yeah, oh, that was Zotac, amazing. Uh, the Zotac yeah. Q box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is basically a heat sink. So <laughs> it's a heat yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 no, that is yeah. you totally have that at your feet during the winter and it'll keep them warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, next to your coffee. Um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you put your mug on it. <laughs> but that's one of the advantages of pies and small devices. Every time I start doing anything other than tinkering with them, um, there's always the Oh, you can't quite do that. Dang. Um, yeah. <laughs> but still, fun project. It, it's still going to be a minute before they will. I mean, do you ever see... Well, I mean, it'll eventually happen. What do you think? That we'll see something like in the 50 to $60 range that could be a viable desktop replacement. Yeah. Not definitely. yet. Not yet. Not yet. But, Not yet, but it, it is coming. It is coming. I have definitely. no doubt of that. <laughs> Will be a thing. Hey, it might maybe might be risk five. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, 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 Jill, we're talking about sixty dollars, not sixty thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, maybe you know something that we could do that with, and like, hey, what about this? You left this out, and we should talk about this. Get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Ask us questions. Tell us we're right. Tell us we're wrong. That's very important. And uh, I, I actually updated mm -hmm. some things this week. Uh, we have a contact page. This is the best way to do it, to make sure we get the information. We can like, hey, maybe we'll put it in the show. We'll just get back to you directly. That is just linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact. Smash that button, fam. Pick the right show weekly, all that. Uh, I did some updates to this. Is Normally, this is Pedro's bit. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm throwing down on this is because I pulled out a CAPTCHA mm. and I've like dialed back in. We uh, have a paid service that does, it analyzes spam like type, you know, typing or anything like that. And I, I think I got it dialed in a little bit better than previous incarnations. So let me know if you get a, I mean, I'll get a notification, but I only check that like once a week. If you try to send something in, uh, it'll tell you right then and be like, oh, you're a robot. Go away, robot. We don't trust you. <laughs> uh, if you <laughs> yes. get that, hit me on social media or pop me in Discord or something like that and be like, yo, I just tried to do something and it said, no, go away. So I'll be able to make those adjustments. That just makes our life easier so we don't have a billion. Uh, mm -hmm. Our most common, what, what do you think the most common uh, spam we get? Pedro? Hmm. Uh... <laughs> VPNs? <laughs> oh. What do you mean? Uh, like uh, VPN advertisements oh, okay. for really shady VPNs? No. Yeah. It's even yeah. worse. It's more dodgy than that. It is companies offering to give us money if they can write an article on our site. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> We yes. get a couple of those a week. They're like, it'll wow. be native advertisements for wow. other companies. They're like, we, and we're talking like a tech article too. We're not, you know, yeah. this is not like, oh, we want to write oh, about. Oh yeah, no, the, yeah. they're that going for on brand. So mm -hmm. they might actually sneak one through. Yeah. To that, I would say, thank you, patrons. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> we can, stay, sometimes it's fun to mess with them. Uh, but outside of that, no, you don't ever have to worry about that nonsense showing up. Uh, I had to throw this in. Our first bit comes from Strider because he's like, OMG, Jill's chair. It's a penguin. No, it's not. See, not oh, anymore. No, no, here's, no, no, here, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing, Pedro, is I, I've said multiple times because Matthew Comandon, if you know him, you love him. The creator of Lutris, I've he hates UHD displays. And I've said for years it's because he's blind and clearly i don't see a penguin <laughs> yeah no, there is no penguin there i mean there are several yeah. penguins behind the chair yeah. but the chair itself is not a penguin oh <laughs> go to well, the eye dr bro <laughs> Yeah, it was a short, <laughs> short span of time last week, and I knew I was going to have to get rid of that chair because it was broke. Actually, the pneumatic broke. So <laughs> during the show, I was just going up and down. It was really annoying. It was broke. So um, that was its last hurrah. Is, is has Steve has been put penguin eyes on it because he said it you know it looked like a penguin. So I have this new chair which fits me a lot better, but I am going to be penguining. Uh, this one out as well. I have I have some plans. I might have a penguin head behind me or something. <laughs> so <laughs> my chair has a hood that gets used yeah. on game reviews. 
Yes, my, it does. My, my chair has, <laughs> it's a chair because it's something to sit on. Um, <laughs> that's how I roll. I'm gonna, let's see. What's up next, Pedro? Up next, we have uh, Katana Steel, Shetrel member yes. extraordinaire, and uh, says, missing affiliate link into support menu. Looks like the affiliate link for Amazon US got lost in the migration to the menu style. Also, the menu style support button uh, doesn't work well on a mobile browser. Not that anyone cares. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, lots of support menu issues there. <laughs> this is true. I should have mentioned that. I We've like enhanced our like support menu like if you're like yo i'm like oh and we added uh pedro and jordan's like they have like they're like a wish list like personal thing go go creep on them um i don't have one you because totally, yeah, yeah i'm boring <laughs> there's one for the studio call that one mine uh i went and looked at that i want to put that in there because that's like a legit thing uh feedback is if you're using a desktop view on mobile yes but <laughs> here's my butt is it's mobile responsive website. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you're in, if it's not trying to show you the desktop website, it works fine. Is that really, let me know. Send me some more feedback with that and I can condense it and reconfigure it. The Amazon US thing. Yeah, I got to add that back. I also got to, because we're in the, um, mm -hmm. we converted from like the regular affiliate link to like the YouTube influencer or social media influencer thing. It's a different thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Smash that bell, fam. We're yes. Dye our hair red. Awesome. Um, Subscribe. <laughs> they offered Share it. Share it me. with your cat. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get that updated. Uh, but hey, thanks for. We might go back mm -hmm. to doing a single page. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it's a big enough problem for people. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, last Ooh. Yeah. but not least, Jill. Please. Yeah, this is uh, comes to us from NLE or nonlinear editor. Um, I highly recommend you buy the studio version of Resolve, like I did. You do get MP4 H.264 support in the studio version. Yes, you do, a and all the extra effects and GPU acceleration, and it works so well. I am a video and multimedia media professional, so obviously, obviously it's worth it to me as a business expense. However, $300 on time for such a great editor on Linux is not bad at all. Oh, I completely agree, agree NLE. I completely agree. I, um, I, I do uh, animation and video editing work myself professionally, and I also teach uh, video editing software. And I'm moving my students over to uh, Blackmagic, uh, DaVinci, Resolve, and Fusion and whatnot, because it is just amazing and getting them on the Linuxes. <laughs> it's a very good piece of software. And for what it delivers, it's a suite. So when you're dealing mm -hmm. with DaVinci, you, you're getting a video editor, you're getting um, after, basically the equivalent of After Effects. After Effects, yeah. Fusion. And the audio. Mm -hmm sweet built in with that. I mean, you can do node compositing, all the fun stuff that you'd normally do. And $300 is staggeringly cheap. Yes. <laughs> Especially compared to our current Adobe <laughs> model that everyone's exactly. trying to move over to. Mm -hmm. Where yes. you can't buy it. Adobe wants to be a, well, not wants to, they are a service now. Like yeah. even up to the point, I think like two weeks ago, they're like, oh, you might get sued if you're still using old Adobe versions of Adobe products. Things they said, go Google that. And I'm like, but, mm -hmm. you know, get the new hotness. Yeah. I like it. I uh, The MP4 H.264, I convert out to um, DNX HD, which is just a lossless version. That, you know, I'm currently using the free version right now just to, like, test things. But, you know, it, it it's incredibly simple to use. I mean, yeah, I spent, like, four to five days with it, and I'm done. Like, there's nothing I can't do with it but then again i mean it's a non-linear video editor i mean out of the complex things <laughs> in my life that's not one of them um 300 bucks mm -hmm. you will get the ability to import mp4s that's cool and uh hardware acceleration that's that that was the crux for me because i yes. love kd in live i think it's great but we're talking about the difference between an hour and 40 minutes and eight one of those gives, yes. Yeah, well, yes exactly one of those gives me the option to try things or make a mistake and not be up until 11 p.m trying to get a show up yeah yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and hey, support Black Magic because they support Linux. And I will say this: it's you can get it up and running on um, Ubuntu. I even made a mm -hmm. how-to for it. It's dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> Just a hundred percent. It's one of the reasons I moved over to Fedora is you know the only supported OS for um, DaVinci is um, RHEL. Yeah. So Fedora is a lot more in line with RHEL and it is infinitely more stable. But keep that in mind. I mean, if you're willing to make that kind of move just for a video editor, video editing better be your thing. Yes, definitely. Also, Fedora is a better Linux distro, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, for desktop use, I would, wouldn't take the Pepsi challenge on that. Because yeah. I'd, uh, I'd rather have Fedora than you. I, yeah. If I'm going to do, oh, definitely. if I'm going to do desktop, no, for anything other than this, I would want 1804, 100% for audio yeah. production, video production. Oh yeah. 100%. <laughs> da Vinci Fedora, latest, you know, yeah. latest and greatest Fedora. <laughs> One thing with 1804, unlike Fedora, every morning when I come into the studio and cut it on and see a uh, DNF updates, I'm like, let's see what's going to break today. Uh -huh. and, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. and rarely anything breaks, but there's, uh, I've had that happen twice with X.264. However, NVN code support built in to OBS with Jack support on Fedora. Can I say that for a moment? Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it yes. for another weekly, awesome. daily, Wednesdays. We're going to roll some credits and get mm -hmm. out of here. Thanks for stopping yes. by. Uh, Maybe I get credits. Boom. <laughs> there they are. Yay. <laughs> thank you, Ben. <laughs> and thank you, Pedro. <laughs> Go on, thank yourself, Jill. <laughs> no. <laughs> and thank you to Chat Realm Darm Dam Dynamic. <laughs> Chat Realm Damnamic. <laughs> Damn. Producers and executive producers. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Jill, uh, Ven and I, we have the technically not native English speakers. Yeah. What's your excuse? No. <laughs> oh. What are you talking about? I mean, it, wait, is, is, is being a spaz an excuse? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all that too, so. Hey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>